Fomortis. Come on. Oh, it's awful. There's so much IS hides from us that's crucial to what we see after we hit that summoning button. We need to understand what factors influence our sessions and what strategies give us the most value for our orbs. To understand this, let's start with the changes they've made over the years. But first, let me know in the comments about your worst summoning session. Let's exercise the demons. So let's see if I can get the Clutch Mikaya. Please, yes, I'm gonna get the Clutch Mikaya. What you saw right there were the glory days. PM1 is summoning for Makaya and has no idea how good he has it or what's about to happen. <laughs> These are average numbers across all colors, and yes, I went and counted every single unit for each one of these banners. Just remember that 1,256 orbs it takes on average to summon a plus 10. Bask in that glory for just a second longer. Tibar! Lord of the Air Tibarn. Oh, he looks amazing. Four person new heroes banners came in and obliterated our summoning rates. How did we let this stand as a community? This was 2019 and a 418 orb jump was huge. I'm showing glitter session here to calm us down <laughs> from the horror. This is our first strategy though. Fewer focus heroes equal better rates. This is a stark example, but it makes sense. That 3% rate that you see is shared between every focus unit on the banner and drops to 0.75% when you're looking at individual focuses for a four person banner. I remember noticing that I wasn't getting as many five stars at this time and I just wrote it off as bad luck. This was very naive of me, <laughs> but what would they do to us next? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I made the right decision. If nothing else, I just spark for Constance in eight months. The Collector himself. KCB Brian is demonstrating the spark for us here. I'm showing the 50th percentile drop of 96 orbs, but that doesn't really capture how amazing this change was. For collectors, this was transcended. You get one of those Ashen Wolves for sure, and you only have two other units to worry about. It was 2021, and for the mergers of the world, this truly accelerates progression when you count it over multiple banners. I have numbers on that at the end, but it drops the cost dramatically. That brings us to our secondary strategy. Work the system when it comes to these sparks. A sure thing in a gotcha is rare, and if you have patience, you can drop your cost dramatically. We have one more major change though. Okay. Oh, well, there's Luis. And that is not great. One, because it's not Alencia. Two, because it just filled my bubbles. Which means now I really want to keep pulling until I get a five star. 2022 came with a four star special, which I think is fantastic, but doesn't really affect our rates. Now, this focus charge. Oblivion was one of the first people I saw who actually filled it up. This video brings up some important things though. Look at how that green curve is slowly separating as the luck gets worse. Focus charges are amazing for either summoning sessions with bad luck or with high merges. At 50th percentile for a plus 10 merge, you're looking at about an 8% savings. That's not insignificant. Looking at the average difference, you're talking about a 157 orb savings. So what's our strategy here? Try to pick banners that utilize focus charges. The fact that it blunts the stab of bad luck is just huge, and I think these are underrated. So let's review our changes. Pick banners with fewer focus units. That means if you need a legendary, grab the one off of a hero fest or a hero rises. If you have a merge project on a three person focus, grab them there. Second, utilize sparking. Try to spread your spending over the sparkable banners that the unit will be on. Brave units are a great example. You can spark those over three different banners throughout the year. Next is choose banners with the focus charge. <laughs> this is a bigger deal when you're looking at merges, but even smaller sessions, when you get to the dreaded 90th percentile, it feels so much better. Next, I think it's time to look at pity rates. You've heard over and over how pity rates are a lie. This is pretty far from the truth, but they are definitely misleading. Let's dissect this 15.5% rate that I had on the Fomortis banner. That sounds like the very next orb is sure to be a five star. In reality, 
I still only have a 15.6% chance that the next colorless orb will be a focus unit. To have the next one be Fomortis is 5.2%. That leaves me 61 orbs on average to get to the next Fomortis. And the way my luck was going, it was going to be more. I was 600 orbs in at this point. Probabilities do not care about history. Just know that just because your luck hasn't been good doesn't mean it's going to get better. At best, you'll get a regression to the mean, which is a consolation to no one, trust me. The best thing here is to set limits beforehand and stick to them. So, should you grab that extra orb on your free summon? Let's look at the math. One extra stone on three banners a month comes to about 144 orbs a year. You have a 65% chance that one of those will be a five star over the year. One. <laughs> those same orbs will increase your odds of completing that plus 10 merge project on a standard banner by about 20%. Now it depends on your goals, but that's kind of huge. Let's go over the last piece to setting yourself up for success though. Color matters. The biggest driver is the four star pool, but let's be more specific. The probability formula in way too simple terms is the desired outcome divided by all possible outcomes. If you'd like to talk more about this, I'd love to chat because this was my biggest misconception. The number of units actually doesn't matter. It's the ratio of sizes compared to the other pools. They just added a blue five star focus and a blue four star. The blue possibilities got bigger compared to the other pools, so blue got worse. They added no green unit on the last banner. Green got even better. I've got the average orbs to get 11 copies of each color right now. That's a 348 orb difference between blue and green. That is substantial. So what's our strategy here? If you're choosing units for score, pick greens. This is one of several reasons I said Sather was so valuable. We'll get to the other reasons shortly. But how does this all apply to A Hero Rises? Here's the reason why A Hero Rises is so good. But if you're liking the video so far, hit the button down below. It's always appreciated. But A Hero Rises checks all the boxes. It's sparkable, only four focus units as opposed to legendaries with 12, has a focus charge. Can you pick the color? Well, no, but three out of four isn't bad. <laughs> Looking purely at savings, our first two units have the least benefit. For Camilla, you're only saving 70 orbs, but if this is a merge project, that means it's an extra spark and you get the benefits of the focus charges. Ophelia is actually worse on this banner because of color sharing. Keep in mind, color sharing limits the benefits of focus charges, but you could already spark her on her debut banner. It was 89 orbs cheaper to plus 10 her on her original banner, but honestly, there aren't very many folks that are summoning for this unit for the merges. Special Spiral 4 is kind of amazing. Now we're getting to it though. Veronica is a fantastic value and you're saving 272 orbs if you're merging her up on this banner. Also notice that for a single copy, it's nine orbs less on average. Legendaries and mythics are fantastic on these things. Now Fomortis is the true value here. This includes the free one you get, but you're saving 552 orbs if you merge him on this banner. That's almost two months of orb income. That's huge. The big takeaway here is, if you have a stash of orbs saved up for one of these units, this is a great place to spend it. If all you can afford to do is a spark, this is still fantastic value. These are powerful units with great fodder, but we need to stop here and compare merging these units versus popular units on other types of banners. Here's why we really do this, right? Using all of these strategies, how cheaply can you get these units? The first thing that pops up is how expensive legendary and mythic units are. The best way to summon for legendaries is on a hero fest or a hero rises. In this case, you're saving almost 300 orbs. That's a month of orb income. For Mythics, the free book OC is a huge value. Being able to spark and get them on a four focus banner with focus charges is 
already incredibly cost effective. This is the only green unit on this chart, so it's not apples to apples, but being 700 orbs cheaper than a red mythic on a 12 focus banner should give you a pretty good idea of the savings. It's why I called this unit the best value in the game when she came out. And yes, it does depend on a rerun, but I'm calling my shot now. Sather will get a rerun. I'm guaranteeing it. <laughs> the Braves are a special case because they're on so many banners per year. Last year, the Brave units were on six banners. That's nuts. You could spark them four times. You can plus 10 them for just under 1k orbs, which is better than the 2018 numbers if you remember PM1's Micaiah summons. The last units I want to talk about are duos. I've been a huge proponent of these units, but just remember, if you don't have Fae Pass, they're closer to legendaries and mythics in cost. This is why I really prefer to see one on a Hero Rises and was disappointed we didn't get one. The conversation on use cases is one for another time, but a Hero Rises, Brave Units, and Main Book OCs are all excellent value. Choose favorites first, but if you need a competitive unit, it's easy to see where to aim. I hope you guys enjoy this as much as I enjoyed creating it. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so through Super Chat. This was a month's worth of work to recreate the calculator and then make the model to look at the probability curves throughout the years and to count every stinking unit in the game. If you're interested in where to use your merge projects that you've summoned for, go check out my guide on how to optimize a free-to-play arena team. But a big thanks to Elder V, whose calculator was the basis for this model and helped me so much by answering questions. We miss you, my brother. Also, a huge thanks to John, FJ, and Izzy, who not only helped me with the script, but helped me crunch numbers and told me when my math was wrong, which was a lot. <laughs> The links to all the summoning sessions that you saw are in the description. They were a fantastic trip down memory lane. Y'all are amazing. Take care and schedule an appointment with your Faeologist real soon.